afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda here of Psych, Defender of the Father Lambert of here to exciting one now versus one. On crossroads between the North, we got Sadak fighting for the Soviet Union for the 10th Guards Rifle Division here with Guard Motor, Partisans, and Shark Rifle here with three machine gun bulletins. Support from Company I start here, so he's probably going to go for his, well, maximum spam. He breathes, lives, dreams, thinks, maxim. He's got schematics for the maxims on his walls. He can disassemble and assemble a maxim in less than two minutes. He is Sadak. In the south, we got Joe fighting for Germany. Deutschland, the Oberkommando West here forming up the 3rd Panzer Division, ready to strike down the 10th Guards Rifle Division in service of the Fasserland. Here's Jove. We've got here scavenge, special operations and elite armoured with infantry and raquette and rifle bulletins. No maximum spam there for Jove certainly and no MD-34 spam either. Kulvang there following up for Jove for the Fatherland rolling down the roads. The dusty uh, Russian roads in the West Indies with Storm Pioneers there. The Storm Pioneers we will have the advantage here. With more engineers, we'll sort of try and maybe sort of stall things down here for a bit. Will Joe be aware of what's happening? His fact also paying the bell for the head. He's laying up sandbags there. Good work by Joe. Gute Arbeit, Leute. Storm Pioneers pushing forward. He's trying to disrupt. He's sad from getting too much fuel. So he's willing to push them out to the open, suffering manpower losses. Just to be able to prevent Sarek there from actually grabbing the fuel point as soon as possible. Nima moving up. He could try and push for the cough point as well. And there we go. Max has been revealed. He's managed to push off there. But getting back into cover there before being suppressed here. That is some uh, reasonably sharp play there by Job. He could try and flank in with a full close walk instead. we got sandbags here. Further defense repaired ahead of time. Almost got the fuel point there. And this time he can't just sort of sweep out. Because again the maximum is now there. So there you go. Ultimately Job decides just to pull back. But he perhaps feels like he's done his done part there. More focus for Job and more Maxims here for Sarek. Sarek primarily going heavy on the Maxims just to protest that they're so absolutely easy to use in his perspective. By the way, little fun fact there. Fulton is moving up here. There we go. Going to try and engage the Maxim. They've gained heavy car first before these shoots. That should work out slightly. But the problem is there's another Maxim. It's supporting the flank, and there you go. Volkswagen's there, go easily suppressed in the south here. Volkswagen's versus Engineers, and the Max over there moving over easily. Grabbing the fuel point here, but not quite connected to it. Stuart Pony is being reinforced. My apologies for any hiccups. And we got more Volkswagen this here for Joe, and the third Panzer TV show. Maxim setting up, they're going to fire down the full gun list. Maxim setting up, here's where the engineers bring forwards. We've got no immediate sign of flame for us there for Sadek. So it won't be easy to push them up. At the same time, with two Maxims firing down there at the full gun of the squad, they will be suffering quite a bit of damage rapidly and they won't be able to last there for too long versus Sadek. Kulban moving up, he could, well, he can't really do much there, but looks like he's going to try it anyway, so he's going to try and use the Kulban to try and get behind and go for some of the call points. Are we third Maxim there for Sadek? Jove's got nothing further there going on from at the moment. Folks gonna do moving about here. The engineers versus Kuperbagen got the point there. Fuel points are killed as well now for Jove. Sarek though does have fuel lead there with Jove at the moment. We got track down the way for Jove and we got fourth maximum there for Sarek. And the tenth guards of rifle division here. Folks versus the maximum here. Shooting away with their car 90 case. And there we go, we got the Schwerer there, much Schlepper, supply half track out there for Job. Probably going to go for the Battle Group Headquarters, he could also go for Mechanized Regiment. I mean, well, these Maxims here looks could do a lot of damage there to Sarek. Of course, he could also aim for the Battle Group Headquarters, simply for the light infantry gun, for example, which could also work well versus that. We'll, of course, have to see what this Job ultimately goes for here. But he's setting up in a more sort of fourth position with it. By the looks, which could, there we go, indicate the Battle Group Headquarters. Some players like to position the Battle Group Headquarters more sort of aggressively, so instead of sort of, you know, four point like that, minimize when retreat, time to allow to fight more aggressively that way. And that looks like what Joe's trying to do, he's trying to sort of protect his territory here, but also here much better by having, you know, well, improved response times by not having to retreat all the way back there, but instead only to the much shorter here. It can work out. The problem is, though, if Sarek then actually managed to get his maximums close enough, he can basically pin down everything near by the Battle Group Hedgehog, in which case this is going to not work out at all for Job. So, a bit of a sort of risky setup there for Job at the moment. Scavenge on the way there for Job. Pretty much standard and, I think, number one pick there amongst all Pokemon best players at the moment. Kuban catching the maximum a bit, doing a bit of damage. Fault goes to the final hit, but there's nonetheless taking quite a bit of damage there. He can use the flame for us for Sarek. 
Maximum crew there slowly bleeding out. Photogun is moving out. And East Maximum grabbing the fuel point. And India's there going for that as well. We got a Storm Pioneer squad hiding down there. Interesting. I wonder if this is a mistake, if there's actually a plan there from Joe. Perhaps waiting to sort of catch a Maximum from an unexpected angle. Hard to say what Joe is thinking there. But right now, Sadek is tightening the noose. And we got a flat half track for Joe. Always, I'm never that, you know, huge a fan of the flat half track at the moment. We'll of course have to see if Job, if anybody can't make some good use of it. But it's two centimeter flak. And Fox, oh, there we go. As soon as the Fox is actually moving, he sort of has a pin, or sort of spot here on the maximum, moves him with the Storm Pioneer Squad. Now that is A, some real patience there by Joe, but also some really good execution there, some foresight. That is really impressive play there by Joe, and also some red play here actually on uh, Crossroads. Most people never tend to think of this as actually sort of movement area as well, so I mean, that is some sharp play there by Joe, sharp play. Very nice to see that. And again, I mean, more players could probably benefit from trying to use this little area. Again, it's sort of a nice little maneuver area. You can sort of try and flank and maneuver around your opponents. But again, it rarely sees usage. So there you go. Flak half track out. Again, a super rare variant that was sort of more field modified. More common ones. Well, every now and equipped. Well, obviously also with the two centimeter the flak. But I don't think quite so freely maneuverable. Sides could fall down. Or they equipped with the flak drilling. I think that one had some pretty impressive arcs of fire as well, but also more firepower rule. And I really wish they would have gone for the flat dwelling, to be honest. So much more fun. Mines down there on the fuel point, but work flat half track. I mean, so far, I mean, will the maximum he doesn't have anything sort of seriously heavy counting. I mean, if he brings enough maximum to the flat half track, I mean, they can do damage as it do have a bit of penetration. And the flat half track does have light armor. There you go, Maxim taking heavy damage there from the flat half tax, two centimeter. Looks like up there, Canon. Another Maxim up there, we go, rearm, and there you go. Just from Maxim firing, the flat half tax has been brought down to less than half health. Again, it's stuff like that that makes me feel like they need to either make the flat half tax a lot cheaper or improve its performance. I know it's maximuming up there, Vecchi, two other maximuming about here. We got a tank for tank going up for Sarek, sort of taking advantage of his fuel advantage. He needs to go for the 270, or perhaps feel like he needs the H276M. Maximum they're firing, other maximum advancing. Field medics up here for the battle group headquarters, providing first aid to any German soldiers in need of it. Maximum advancing there. This is Fox's there with Sturmgewehrs. Don't flinch, just keep shooting. The Russians, for the most part, can't hit. When you uncover that is. If you're out in the open, uh, you're on your own. There you go, flat half track doubling back. But two point on oh, points that have been grabbed, but work there. You could actually try and flank through here, get behind Joe's front line. I mean, this is sort of an actual flank path most players tend to neglect. Since most players, again, won't really consider it at all. So, I mean, it's, you know, again, really good spot to try and get behind your opponent and sort of catch them off guard. Max and they're being pushed back. Fultgun is firing away there. Flak half track advancing, of course, needs to be careful. And there you go, maximum fire raining down. Flak half track firing away, then return on the maximum, pushing that away. Yet to see any sign of life there from the tank, which tank command. How's they getting bombarded now by the flak half track? Light infantry gun for Job. A bit of light artillery, though he already has like head effort, just in case that Sarek rolls up any kind of vehicles or armor. Just continued heavy fire there from the two centimeter flak. 38, as it was known. Or sort of the initial flak gun there of the Germans. Would later be superseded by the flak feeling. Sort of the lighter one. Of course, they had the flak 37. Of course, the more iconic flak 88. They did also have other variants of bigger ones, or slightly variants on the flak 88. The problem was, though, they were usually sort of more maintenance heavy. And just in lower numbers, they're generally not used outside of Germany's borders. Little fun fact there as well. Again, lost of sandbags here from Joe. Again, good work and nice to see. We got Jaegers out here from Joe as well, appearing here around the centre. Max moving up here in these forces just to hold up. He might want to move up the flat half tech support there. Sarek has yet to go for any light vehicles. Holy moly, he's not even bothering with that. He's rushing for 30. He's going for the mechanised armour company. 
That's definitely a rare play, but that could actually catch Joe completely off guard because most players, sorry, players at the moment just don't bother with it. But uh, Sarek is clearly not that tight there. Good hit there for the flat half tank on the Maxim, almost wiping out the entire bloody menace. And here we go, Fox is pinned down. Too much Maxim find the longer run. Need that flat half track to support. Nemo, we got Sion Punish pushing up the west here. Cool Bang Lord about a bit. We got a Max moving up. Oh, I, I would briefly thought that was one of Joe's minds there, but clearly that was one of Sarek's. There you go. <laughs> flat half track finally arrived to sort of save the day here for the folks. Gonna need two men already dead there. Light infantry gun firing down the Maxim. And there we go, Sarek is going for a 10 minute T-34-76, rolling out the armor. That's the fascists. That's definitely going to be bad news there for Job, unless Sarek uh, plays his first T-34-76 there awkwardly or poorly. Oh, nice move here, realizing there's more effort here on the side. He actually makes a quick coup de main on the central cutoff point there for Sarek. Well played by Joe, that is some extreme well good to tactical sense there and cuts off Sarek's resources well played there well played Jaeger supporting here the flat cuff tech versus the Maxim being suppressed until if I rain down Jaeger's opening up with their car 19 k's and scoped he 40 fleece Max moving up here past another mine well seem to operate from that house there no say MD34 so we got a truck here for Job could it be the Shroud Pants at quarters? Will be mechanized. What will Joe go for? I mean, Mark Sarek is bringing up a heavy mortar. He's probably going for Guard's motor. And T-34-76 moving down here, catching a Jaeger squad out in the open. A Kedden effort there, already more or less ready to fire at it. There you go, 88mm rocket there, impacting on the frontal armor of the T-34-76. And another hit there, takes it down to half health. That's definitely not a good start. And there we go, Max and White there, Max and White. That's a definite win there, I think, for Joe versus Sarek. D-34-6 moving up there. Oh, gonna get Panzer fast if he's not careful. A kidnap for moving up. Flag half track trying to get away. A kidnap for... Oh, flag half track down. But the kidnap for lands it in the T-34-6. An opportunity, I think, there by Sarek. But now he might actually risk losing the T-34-76. And I don't think... Trading that for a flat calf tank is going to be worth it at all there for Sarek. And there we go, in fact he did it, so... That was a poor trade there by Sarek, poor trade. I mean, great he got it, but it's not worth a T-34-6. I mean, that's definitely going to give Joe more time to stabilize the front line and bring out some armor of his own. So that was definitely, I think, a bit of a mistake there by Sarek. Max and they're taking losses. Hey, Mortar, they're firing away so far, yet to land any hits against the Germans. Trap hunted quarter sitting up here to form a further stronger forward position here for Jove and the farther land. Just reinforcing. So far, most of Jove's infantry hasn't really scored a lot of veterans in part because, well, with the engagement of the Maxims, there's not so much opportunity to actually do damage, meaning overall sex or the one they hit with the damage scheme. In fact, command point wise, he's actually got almost a two point lead over Jove as well. There you go, push back, hey mortar running down. Maximum there versus Fultz going to lose in the east, heavy cover again, assault rifles this time around, increasing the five over a bit there versus the Fascisti. There you go, almost got the Maxim. Strap Hunter's quarters almost done there for Jove. Maxim push back, and there we go. Maxim opening up the full gun of these. Veterans, you two gain, increase suppression. That's going to make things worse there for Job. So, what armor will he actually be going here for versus Sarek? Panzer 4, Yak Panzer. Will he actually be a Panther here? Panzer come back and forth. Max making caught by Jaegers and full gun of these. Rapidly push back. Also noting here, Sarek is up at five Maxims. Five medium machine guns there. Folks, was there flanking in. And a grenade assault there. Pouches filled with grenades as they sort of lock them in the infantry. German infantry would generally sort of be issued grenades as sort of depending on the mission. So again, if they're sort of expected to do a lot of assaulting and so on, then they'd be equipped with a lot more grenades. So I mean, it sort of makes sense as doctrinal ability. Yeah, in a bit of trouble. 
Fox with the move up to back up. We got our maximum there covering up. He Sack usually just putting so much effort into his maximum there to make it hard there for Joe to move his into freely. Though, of course, with the increase of firepower there from Job and good use of common sacks, it is a bit hard here for Sack to sort of fully leverage his maximums. T3045 there on the way to Sack now being up, being up for something a bit heavier than the T3476. As for Job, there's nothing, no sign of anything. I hope he doesn't go for the Ospin because that would definitely not help him right now. There you go, Maxim there suffering quite a bit there from the incendiary grenade. Other Maxim opening up, seizing territory again. Joe a bit more on the back foot once more. But Orbis of Darden. Germany's finest of Darden. T-35 there arriving for Sarek. Jaegers here. Ooh, we got a sprint here, perhaps realizing he's in a bit of trouble there. Sarek pulled back the maximum use attempt suit. In the East, folks have been caught up in the open with Maxim and T-35. With this 85mm gun, adopted from a Soviet anti-aircraft gun, by the way. Salvaging the cool one there that was lost. Good work there by Joe, shows a bit more fuel, but also munitions. He's got a full Maxim push here in the East. And then you need sort of covering it up. T-35 the road towards the center. Folks with a bit of trouble. And almost on there with the LMG-34 on the way. Artillery raining down. And there we go. Max with a bit of trouble. Heavy Max MG-34 fire bit of flak fire as well. Come on Jürgen, hit properly. You're an Obersoldat now. Not some false grenadier. That means you have to hit properly. And go, Maximum almost got the bastards, but they do manage to get themselves out of the problem here in the centre. Jump up in court here in the west. T35 there keeping the flanks clear of harassers and flankers. So sharp reaction there by Sadik with the T3045. Which basically, I mean, had basically the same chassis as the T3476. So it was basically the turret where the bigger differences were. More spacious, better armoured, bigger gun. But the main tank itself was not that frightfully armoured anymore. Not by 1944 45. But 45 millimeters of sloped armor really didn't count for that much anymore. Not versus 75 millimeter guns and 88 millimeter guns, for example. That's the thing to keep out about sloped armor. It's only, you know, as effective as the shell hitting it. The bigger the shell becomes, the less effective the slope actually is. Also, factor in generally not so much training for the crews and high sort of losses amongst them. Also leading to some not so great performance there. That's another story for another time. There we go. Heavy mortar crew that taking hits from the lightest infantry shots. Almost 32. The 18 kills. Pretty good work there. Katusha on the way for Sadik. Not saying more armor. Interesting to know he's got the mortar. He's not really trying to facilitate any attacks here. I mean, for example, he could, you know, lay down the smoke you know, around the spare planted quarters, push upwards, you know, score some of the points around it, and then sort of just blast around anything around it as well. There. I mean, that thing that could work out nicely there for Sarek, but oh well. Arcade may have been spotted by the T-45 being pushed back here. Almost wiped out there. Arcade like may have itself was sort of more of a 1943 thing before it was sort of really discontinued. It was basically while the sort of, in the initial stage of the panther effect, they weren't quite sure would be best as infantry or sort of mounted weapons. So they sort of went for both. And like Kadmir sort of was the one sort of lost out there. Though it had more range and accuracy than the panther effect. I think it was primarily used sort of by, you know, units that needed light rent or tank weapons like Fadschmjägers and Kibirkjägers and the likes here. Kachushi out there for Sadik. Now, a little fun fact about that one, the Baffin is has actually copied the rockets of Dungas, just used rockets they captured from the Russians on their own sort of modified Panzerwerfers that can fire that one. Little fun fact. And not something that's very often discussed at all. Rockets raining down here. I mean, obviously, you know, at this point, knows where the Vulcan headquarters is, so targeting with the Kachushit tends to be pretty good sense. And of course, there's a bit of the danger of positioning at that forward, but at the same time, if it, it wasn't here, it'd just be firing here, so I suppose it doesn't make too much of a difference as long as Joe can actually keep it safe. Joe is yet to go for any armor. Might be planning here for the Panther. I mean, if he's going for the King Tiger, I'd say that is pretty damn silly, but a Panther might work. That's still going to be a bit risky, but in theory, it could work if he plays it correctly there versus Sarek. Orbital done moving about here. 
the Panther 4 fake would have worked quite nicely soon. Give yeah, us a sec, but then again with the team 3035. Hard to say. We got Bungary against the Max. Oh! And almost gets the entire thing there. Oh, wipes it. Wipes it. Excellent work there. Grenade assault could fall up here on the other Maxim. Darsen still got stun. We got artillery rain down here as well. Force causing a full retreat there. I think for some of the units, the Kedmap opening up there. Orbs on need to retreat. Panther on the way there for Job and the third. Panzer TV Sean, T-35 there, taking hit there from the Kedmap at Veteran T-1. Orbs will die almost wiped out there. Maxim flanking here to the Kedmap as T-35 pulls back. More movement in the west there. Need to actually do more movement though. Sarek steel grip on the battlefield though still holds. To the enemy. Fixing up the battle group headquarters there, troops healing reinforcing. Panther almost done, Katusha moving out there, three kills. Healing reinforcement going on on the west front because moving ahead. The kid moving back for reinforcement, Jaeger setting up their veteran to one, ten kills. And fourteen kills on these chaps as they get reinforced. And there we go. Panther for Job and the third Panther to be shown. In these max moving ahead here, double maximum attack. We got the T-35 there on the way for Sarek, so he's bringing up more armor. They might change his tune once he sees the Panther here. And there you go, Panther opens up. Max has been caught out in the open. Pin by machine gun roughly halfway done. And grenade assault following up here on the advancing folks going to be supporting the Panther. There you go, cancel the T-3045 for the SU-85. Point here in the center being grabbed, trick being pushed back. There grabbed. There we go, maximum pushed back here as well. RTS man tonight there, Job access to the field. We got a flank here in the west, but the folks is catching the maximum. If he can sort of set up in a good time with proper grenade assault on it, he might be able to work out something there. But T-35 there to the rescue, and oh, strange on mine, losing. Panthers there making about a bit, got two kills so far. Beyond that, not so much else there for the Panther crew. Veteran TV Max may be engaged by the Panther. Still raining down. Note that the Orbital Command West Panther has a few advantages over the Wehrmacht Panther besides you know, higher Veteran T and you know, lower tier. Essentially it also has better machine guns and better accuracy on the move than the Wehrmacht Panther, which does give it a few sort of extra edges over that one, while also being more accessible. Patricia firing there. What's been caught out in the open? Rockets landing on the battle group headquarters. Panther there firing away at the Russian foes. A few shots bouncing off there. Machine guns blazing away there. Go air shooter five moving up there with his 85 minute gun. Panther pulled back. Okay, never moving up. Shoots, misses, hits the house. And instead, Sergei, you that's There you go. T-55 the lands hit. Okay, now for there you go. Air shooter five lands hit. Okay, now for setting up shoots. Gets hit there, the other Kedma flanks the HD5. Good work there by Joe. Not entirely sure that was intentional or what, but he ends up actually doing quite a bit of damage there to the HD5 with his Lekedneffa. H100 more to there, almost gets the Lekedneffa, but he does survive. So a close call there for Sadik and for Joe, respectively. Fixing up the Panther there, he might want to consider bring up another Sturm Pioneer squad to help the repairs there on the Panther. E-35 they fixed up, HD5 next. Eight kills and veterans he won. Salvaging here the maximum rather than trying to turn it against Sarek. Bit of fuel and a bit of munitions there for Jove. Panther good to go again for the Fatherland. Looks like he's paying for another push. And will it go for the Osprey? We'll say up for the Panther 4. We might actually go for another Panther. Osman number two there for no Osman number two actually getting an Osman there. I'm just so used to so many players going for Osmans at this point. You know, if someone goes one, I've just assumed they might as well already gotten more before at this point in the game. 
But yeah, so many Orbital Commanders today is just relying on Osmonds too much, I feel. Anyways, Osmonds moving up here to support a Panther, but also Infantry. I mean, I think that's a much better mix here. Osmond and Panther than, you know, Osmond and Osmond. Gasman out there for Sarag, actually calling up his Infantry, but now, of course, finding himself in a bit of trouble here with the Flak Panther. It should fire moves up and gets ready to fire with its gun. So, tank destroying by these were actually very much inspired by the Stool which the Surge were actually quite impressed with once they encountered it. Which is a sort of another fun fact. I mean, the Surge were really impressed by it. Again, that's basically why also they had a lot of assault guns and likes there, just like the Germs Ops. They used them a bit differently, but the sort of idea that the concept was something the Soviets very much liked. But again, you know, fun fact. Now, Tiller rain down supporting the advance of the Panther, forcing Surge to pull back there from the center victory point. Nice execution there. Max is being flanked here by the Osmond and Orbital Dark. Nice sort of mean anti-infantry combo there. Little sort of well, very good anti-infantry formation there. Issue 5 falling back here. Panther pushing forward here. Almost got the issue 5. There you go. It's abandoned. It's abandoned. Oh dear. Don't think you have sold that. Issue 5 gets recruited. Takes a hit down the Panther. Osmond engaging inside the base. Oh, so many targets. He's just slaughtering away there. Ah, uh, doesn't get any kills. Oh, wait, there we go, gets a few. Still did some damage there. That was nasty there, but Joe, I like that. Miss Maximilian caught up in the open by the Panther machine guns, bang down upon it. Three. All in all, one MP42 and three MP, or two MP34s. Takes it in for the T-Fed Park, but Kenmap opens up. Veteran two, Panther pulls back. Very close to Veterans one then. There we go, he's bringing up, oh. I would say more Sturm Pioneers. The problem is he's lost the first one. So he's just bringing up replacements. Aha, now there are more of us. Yeah, so others died. Ha, <laughs> shite. Always like that, isn't it? Yeah. There only are more of us if we die first. Panther falling back. Ospin a bit as well here. Five kills, six kills. Orbs are taking up position here behind a rather flattened haystack at this point. With MD34 on their car 90k, 16 kills close to Vitsony 2, which also constitutes the real sort of offensive bonus there. The rest is basic survivability. Well, there's a bit of suppression at Vitsony 4, but otherwise, it's pretty much survivability they all get. Austin creeping ahead there with its 37 meter flak. Almost got the maximum there. Orbs on here versus Guardsman. Veteran 2, there we go, and the guards are not in the open versus unit heavy car. I mean, the Orbison actually got this one. They should pretty much, you know, be able to defeat the, the guards from there. Even the DP light machine guns, they are no match for hardened German infantry. Patricia firing down the center against Jove's center. Panther good to go again, but so far it's moving. Oh! Gar Maxim there, Gar Maxim. But T-35 there keeps things covered, closing in a Veteran 2. So I might want to call more armor, actually. Another T-35 there could be helpful for Sarek. And the 10th guard's right and there you go. Guard orbs are caught up, there you go. Veteran front for the Panther. Good hit then the T-35 for Kedma for moving up. Veteran T-2. Increase for your fine increase accuracy. Panther lands another hit. And Oz, H-5 moving up, Kedma for setting up, and... Oh dear, right to the line of fire here. T-35 gains Veteran 2 there. Takes another hit, needs to be careful. You got Mark Vehicle on the Panther. Oh dear, Akednev almost walked up at the same time. T-34 goes down. Huge loss there for Sarek. His veteran T-34 crew is dead. Burning up. Most likely since T-34, 85s, well just T-34s in general, were pretty much hazards. Since there was no easy way of getting out of them, it was not really well designed for getting out of. And a lot of flaws in that direction as well. Field going all the way there for Sarek, feeling a bit pressured, I think, here by Job's Panther play. And if you get that to victory too, that would certainly, I think, give uh, Sarek a bit more to worry about. A Kenmer from each retreat. Osman moving up there, nine kills, almost victory to one here. Garth and Max moving up towards the center, and we got a Panther fort now on the way for Job. Orbs on here, Vetsin did two. Osman opening up, getting a few hits there. Vetsin's one, 11 kills for the Fatherland. H-5 opens up, you got Mark, no, that's button up actually, not Mark Vehicle, that one's still, holy hell actually, I just noticed that he's got 700 munitions, there's been no mind to demo charges from him. 
We have lost the machine. He could easily lay down a lot of more mines versus uh, Job here. You choose your fires away. Fox there versus Max. I'm trying to get close until it's raining down. Pantaformus down. Oh, almost ready. And then center the Orbison continue to hold the line there halfway to victory team three. Panther moves up to engage maximum crew, gunning them down out in the open. Marking and 13 kills. And we got the Panther 4 out. Fun fact about the Panther 4, it actually had an armored ammunition compartment which was protected versus ammunition blowing up. Uh, Panther did not actually. They might have regretted that one down the road. Still Panther 4 here on the field, should help it. There was a Sarex choke, and we got the H5 opening up, and it's actually half H of it, and T2. Still remaining down here, Katrusha moving up as well. Artillery there from Job here versus uh, Sarek. Sarek seems very insistent, you know, constantly attacking from the center. Oh, I actually forgot about the mid game analysis. Oh, well, never mind. Basically, he's not really trying to lay down any smoke screens versus Job while attacking. You know, he's not trying to cover up and make it harder for Job to shoot into bits and pieces. He just sort of keeps passing away there. And, you know, he does have the mortars. There's not really much of an excuse there for Sarek, in particular since it's a heavy mortar with more range, meaning he can fire you know, even further into Job's lines to cause chaos and havoc. He could also at least use flares to maybe do a bit of reconnaissance spot ahead for, you know, better positions. Maximum there, 2 versus the Fox Gundy, suppressing them. Field gun here being caught, that's definitely not a good move there by Sarek. But Lance hit in the field, or uh, Oswind. Panther finding him around the east as well. Orbital down here, very close, 53, 27 kills each retreat though. Work soog! Work soog, job! Garkman can it only to be caught here by the Ospin. 15 kills, close to 52. Panther here, it's still at 14. And there we go. We do have a flare down there actually from Sarek and his mortar. Good work. Max from there though, in a very exposed position, and the assault is pretty much instantaneous dead. We have lost the machine gun crew. Got the field gun crew there under control. Five here trying to avoid taking too much fire there from the fascists, but not as quite succeed. Sag there with a lot of fuel as well. He really needs to expend some resources by now. Corpses suddenly beginning to fly there in a few directions. Hard work for the pioneers fixing up the buildings. We've taken a lot of damage there from the Katushis. Not bad prioritization there. They might want to, of course, fix up his armor so he can be a bit more aggressive with as well. But Kevin is sneaking up here. I think he was trying to sort of creep up and sort of catch some of the. Sags vehicles and armor, possibly most likely the Katusha. Pants 4 against by the issue 5, closing on the victory 2. Field gonna run, engaging from the front. Oh dear, oh dear. That might have been a mistake there by Job. And it does go down there. What a waste by Job. What a waste. And now we've got Vetti 2 on the issue 5, which increases penetration accuracy, making it much more of a flat to the Panthers. And that's actually really bad there for Job. That was a big mistake. No, he's just lucky that Sag isn't bringing up more armor at the moment. Maximum Nermals, what? And there you go. Another T-55 down the way right for Sadek. And the 10th Guards Rifle Division. Orbison down so close to the 23. Job could of course also consider maybe going for a Yak Panther that there's the issue 5. We got shots there fired at the Shvair Panther quarters and a Katrusha about here as well. We're trying to silence Job's infrastructure essentially. But there you go, Panther on the prowl on the move. Gets a good hit there in the issue 5 with its 75mm gun. Of course, the issue 5 gets a good penetrating it down the front armor of the Panther. There you go, catching the field gun out in the open. Bad news for Sarek. White. Oss has been moving ahead. Panther hanging back. They're waiting for someone to fix it up. Fultz was there ceasing away the field gun. And, oh, blend cover to cover up the retreat here. Good work by Joe. Good work. Laying down the smoke screen essentially. Buying the 
Field and their time to get away though. Needs to get the Panther up to cover it as well. And we got the Osman sneak up to the base again here. Actually, clever work there. Field gun wipe though. That's definitely some uh, nice play on the crossroads by Joe taking advantage of this. Tends to be some sort of bit of blind spot. So nice work there. T Fell the taking hits from the Panther, but the Panther's all turned down. There you go. 22 kills. He's just murdering away inside Sarek's base. We got, got buttoning up there. Panther getting marked. No, oh, he's but marking up here the Osfind. He wants to punish Joe for since 22 kills here. I mean, really, that is some great A work there by Joe. Just slaughtering Sarek's troops within his own base. No place is safe when Joe is on the field. Is definitely clever. They're taking advantage of a blind spot there in Sarek's head. And now hitting the west as well. Joe is getting more bold, confident, and aggressive. Oh no. He's sneaking by Ken for now into Sarek's space. The brass balls on Joe. Possibly stolen from a bear. Having wrestled it. Holy moly. How often do you see something like this? He actually tries to knock out one of Sarek's tanks inside his own face and he almost gets away with it. Holy moly. That is damn impressive there. That is damn impressive. And definitely punishes Sarek for not trying to defend him more often again. Focusing too much in the center and here. I mean, that is some grade A punishment there from Joe. Grade A punishment. And he gets away with the field gun in the end. And we got Pet... Eventually, two on the Panther, they're adding the armored shirts and that, which were to help sort of defend the sides versus anti tank rifles and the likes. And particularly on the earlier models like the D and the A, since they only had 40 millimeters of armor, it's only the Panther Model G that increased the side armor to 50 millimeters. Samex going down there. Veteran Z3 there in the orbital garden versus Veteran 3 Guardsman. Might try and get the Haymort there with the Gabaltalan. Nope. No. Pull back down the face of the Guardsman a bit. Panther good to go. No more armor for Sarek. I think he should consider more armor, but he also needs to change up his tactics. He's just sort of relying now on more brutish head on assaults. And again, Jove is uh, well countering them reasonably well and punishing for him for it, but at the same time, of course, by attacking through here. Again, he's made several now daring assaults there. And they've each been able to do quite some embarrassing damage there to Sarek. Edge farming up, engaging the Panther. Good hit, good hit. Get oh, misses the Edge Fiber shooting right below it. That is awkward. Another penetrating hit there from the very veteran, almost ace level Soviet crew here. Now almost veteran in three, which means high mobility but also high rate of fire. Another T-35 there on the way for Sadek. Osman moving up here, 25. Oh, oh, oh! Just briefly looked like he was going to make the same move again. We have a new T-34 standing by. T-35 on the way, number. Three or four there for Sarek. And with more was on here for Joe. I mean, he's pretty much got the infantry game, I think, beat against Sarek. Again, who's relied too much on Maxims, didn't replace enough infantry, and certainly did not lay down a snot ton of mines in the process. I mean, he's certainly got a lot of armor now. The problem is he's not really leveraging, I think, too creatively there versus Joe. We have an isolated sector. Getting here the Jaegers, we've got a Rakedner for hiding, got a field gun moving up, and they're not being fixed though, that is some interesting pro choiceation there, but there you go, Defeat up taking hits from the field guns and the Rakedner for Veteran D3 gained, oh dear, ambush bonus, Defeat for goes down too, I don't think Sarek was suspecting that much anti-tank present there from Job in that area, again, operating so closely to sort of the center of Job, there's a bit more dangerous, he needs to reconsider, he needs to actually consider trying to attack Job's base in return maybe, Again, changing up his tactics a bit and his attack patterns. Kachush hiding all the way up there. We can see Sarek is utterly paranoid with the way Jove attacks. 
utterly paranoid. And there we go again. I mean, it's not even like he's trying to count it or make it difficult for Joe to do. He doesn't even try to mine up despite, you know, having so many munitions. It's getting kind of silly there. We have lost the machine gun crew. 26 kills down the Ostwind. H5 shoots, misses. Better luck there for Joe's Ostwind. Still not fixing up the Panther. Could at least consider some more Sturm Pioneers. Or maybe a Schwer Panther Mechanized Regiment. Not Schwer Mechanized Regiment, but just Mechanized Regiment. Finally getting to work there. But Sarek definitely much more on the back foot here versus Job now. Much more on the back foot. Trying to silence the orbs on there with the Katusha. There's increased desperation there in Sarek's actions. As he desperately tries to stem here Joe's actions. Stop them, halt them, no matter the cost. Trenton kills there on the Ostman. Another hit there from the HD5, which is now East Veteran 2 3. Hero of the Soviet Union. Truck on the way there for Job. Gonna be mechanized. He's also quite a bit of munitions, but almost a thousand munitions for Sarek. Oh no. Why no mine, Sarek? Or demo charges? I mean, at this point, I'm pretty sure you could just have a minefield stretching from here to there and still have munitions to spare. Field gun bombarding his mortar and he might actually be able to silence it with the field gun. Or not. Actually reinforcing here from the support them company here, but still that is some balls there on Joe again. Panther good to go, 15 kills, field gun wiped out. Flare down there from Sarek. Also moving up, 28 kills. Field gun there being hauled back towards Russian lines. Orbis starting hot on the heels, 39 kills. Wiped it. Would be a good spot here, I think, for the Osman and the Panther to try and gauge here. Defend five men, five moving up. You got the Panther guy, Ken F here. Could turn about a bit. Support here, the Obstacle Guard. Three men. 44 kills, almost 55. And 45 kills. There we go, Vetri found the Obstacle Guard. There's a press in the maximum crew. Fox was there, pushing forward. Well, Osman moving up. There's the Panther job. At least moving up like Ken F, that's something. There we go, Panther on the move there for Joe. Panther on the move, Panther comes back and fifth at Panzers. Okay, now if that lands several hits on the H-5, or T-55, damage, and there you go. H-5 there could be flanked here by the Panther, he blitzes in now. Mark Meekle there, shot bounces. H-5 there, big bench 24, bench 24, increased range. H-5 can't escape now, Panther goes in for the kill. Gets the HD5, Panther almost down though, half HV3 needs to blitz. Whew. Gets a hit there, a parting shot on the T35 there. But Kenna for shoots, barely hits. Oh, barely misses it. Close call there. 20 kills on the Oswind. Moves forward, and Kenna for there advancing as well. Maxim there being wiped, 33 kills, 34. All of our machine guns has been silenced. Panther and Dye need repairs, but I think it's done well there. The and now gauging up here. Oh, so many units bunched up in one small place. 35. Holy moly, it's Veteran G3 there. 40 kills. T-35 down there. At 50 kills. 50 kills on the Oswind. 51, that is insane. Insane 51 kills on the Ostwind. <laughs> Obviously, it didn't help, you know, that Zerg pretty much just provided, you know, a bunch of bodies for it to fire into, but, you know, 51 kills. Oh, we have brutal sword here between Job and Sarek. Sarek starting out aggressively over the maximum span, which you get is very good versus the Orbital Commander Vest, but as the game progressed, we sort of saw, you know, the floor saying Sarek's battle plans, which tend again to be sort of very rough head on. No use of smoke and no real flanks that would allow Job to sort of slowly but surely deflect Sarek and push him back and overall deliver some good blows, also taking advantage of the blind spots 
in sort of his uh, mind space there, attacking through it, doing a lot of damage inside. Sarek's space almost knocking out a tank, in fact, causing Sarek to get even more paranoid. And Sarek did not try to count. In fact, the huge munitions float there was a mistake, I think, by Sarek. But, I mean, even then, you know, he could have changed up his attacks a bit more, his attack patterns a bit more. And he probably could have done a lot better there versus Joe Rule, I think, adapted nicely and took advantage of the F Sarek's mistake there. So, I mean, really well played here by Joe. Thumbs up from me. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gives you some thoughts from your matches. If it did, you know, why not subscribe, like, share, and comment on it. If this is Imperial Engine, cheers. Thank you for watching. Hope to you all tomorrow another time. And of course, also, a big thanks to Ben and Roger, by the way, for donating to the Propaganda Cast and the war effort there. Most appreciated, of course, as it does allow me to keep, you know, casting. So, thumbs up as well to you two chaps. Splendid work. Cheers, and see you tomorrow for another exciting episode.